Thank you, Octavio and Vicky, and good evening, folks. As you may have noticed, various aspects of illegal gambling activity have been making the news lately, from cockfighting operations shut down in Ed Couch Elsa and Mission to the almost constant string of eight liners that open up and shut down, only to open up again. It's an interesting world with a set of laws that, as you'll see, are often blurred through county lines. It only takes one. Gambling, derived from the old English word gamma men, meaning to play. And as a society, we play a lot. <laughs> Producing over $10 billion in revenue in the state of Texas per year through lottery, charitable bingo, and wagering. And that's just regulated legal gambling. When it comes to the illegal or unregulated gambling, you can ante up another $15 billion for that. But like all vices, it can become addictive. Unlike other addictions, a drink, a hit, or a shot will not necessarily change your life, but a heavy hand just might. Basically, that's what they're, they're, they get their high off of. They're, they're the rush, the adrenaline um, that they're feeling when, when they're, they're gambling. Dr. Elizabeth Cortez is a psychotherapist with her own counseling center and has been dealing with gambling addicts, be it legal or otherwise, and sees it as a growing problem here in the Valley. So if they win money to them, it's not, oh, I've got to go pay the bills. To them, it's, okay, I have more money to gamble again. But when it comes to illegal gambling, the laws can be a little blurry, or perhaps, as you'll find out later, fuzzy may be the better term. Take the city of La Feria, for instance. Like any Texas border town framed by a railroad track, dentist office, a bakery, and a slew of slot machine houses. Take a trip down Business 83, below the Vegas drive through it's a venerable South Texas Sunset Strip with inconspicuous house after house, filled parking lots at 2 in the afternoon on a Tuesday. The machines are called 8-liners, so-called because there are 8 ways to win, but it's what you win that is causing so much controversy. Specifically in Penal Code 4701, subsection B, more affectionately known as the Fuzzy Animal Law. So called for the line that states it's legal if it rewards the player exclusively with non-cash merchandise. Prizes like toys or fuzzy stuffed animals. And what do the people of La Feria think? Oh, there's just too many of them here in, in La Feria. Just one, one too many. There's too many, man. Too many? You don't think it's good for the community? Huh? You think it's good for the community? Yeah, the, the old ladies lose their socks. Yeah? Yeah. It's good for the community, like make, make money? Yeah, bring your money in. Do you think they should be legalized like all across South Texas? Like they're not legal and... Legalize them everywhere. Yeah? That's a good idea? Very. Do you, do you go to them? Do no, no, them? no. Do you know anybody that does make grants? No, 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 I keep all my money. <laughs> they're always crowded. They're crowded like hey, one o'clock. They're, they're hitting there. it. Yeah? Would you open one up yet, Steve? Hell no. no. It's illegal. <laughs> I spoke with one eight-liner owner who didn't even know what percentage his machines paid out. Who's paid out with their, with their registered payout? And what is that? Hmm? How do you know? You don't know how much they pay out? I mean, can that be something your customers should know? Or the people that come here to know. I do that. But one of his customers did. They don't pay nothing. Maybe. No, they don't pay nothing? No. Yeah. Usually not. I, I mean, lost them. It's an oftentimes confusing yet colorful world, but one thing is for sure. In the feria, the lights are on, the doors are open, and the money is being made. Well, we hope you enjoyed part one of Where the Chips Fall, and be sure to join us tomorrow night for part two as we delve deeper into illegal gambling activity in the Valley. Octavio and Vicky, I'll send it back to you. So, um, yeah, I mean, what, you know, what do you, what would you say to the people who think this should be I illegal? Like all, all these, the eight miners. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, all this is, is entertainment, mental stress, and for people to have fun, other than going out there, messing up in the highways, in the streets, or getting drunk or whatever. This is entertainment. Entertainment? 
that has people losing and winning sums reaching into the billions, and law enforcement struggling with loopholes and loose laws. Meet this man. We'll call him Jack. He's one of the many customers along the South Texas Sunset Strip. Jack thinks everybody is blowing things way out of proportion. It's just little airplanes, there's little uh, monkeys, and you know, little, uh, all kinds of machinery. And Jack thinks gambling is about personal responsibility. If you're gonna push in there $150, uh, you know, one spin, you ain't gonna get it back. And Jack thinks it's time for legalization. It should be legalized. But that's not in Jack's hands, at least not directly. Although it starts in the state legislature with representatives like 40th District Representative Aaron Pena. Well, first of all, eight liners are illegal in Texas in the way that most of them are being, uh, are being used. And it's up to the local district attorney to, to prosecute those cases. Potential district attorneys like Carlos Maso running in Cameron County to replace in battle district attorney Armando Villalobos. The problem with the laws right now is that the actual machine, the eight-liner machine, uh, is not actually legal. It, it's, it's the way in you, which you operate the machine. How you operate it determines uh, whether it's illegal or not. But as far as Hidalgo County is concerned, when it comes to eight-liners... We have busted quite a few in Hidalgo County, and if I receive information that any of them are in operation, then we're going to do, I'm going to do, everything that I can to bust them out. But Hidalgo has been encountering another gambling problem in the form of cockfighting, a graphic sport that dates back to ancient Greece, and it also has deep-seated history in Latin America, taking place in a cockfighting arena or palenque. But currently it is illegal across the U.S., Canada, and most of Europe. Cockfighting in itself is against the law. That's one charge. If you've got betting, then you've got promotion of gambling, which is another charge. And if you have two or more, or three or four or five people, which you are going to have, all participating in the same overt, overt criminal episode, then you have engaged in organized crime activity. One recent cockfighting ring came to a bloody end in Ed Couch Elsa. And you were saying there's five people injured? Just like eight liners, cockfights can be hotbeds for other criminal activity. What I'm trying to do is improve the quality of life of our people here in this county by taking those out. From the backyard cockfights, hidden behind the barns and farms along endless stretches of South Texas Road, to the eight liners here in the Feria, lit up and lined up in plain sight, gambling takes many forms and holds many faces. Whether for it or against it, there's no denying there is money and decisions. And so that's a question that ultimately will have to be decided by voters. To be made. It, it ain't no, uh, no uh, big deal, it's just entertainment. Mind relaxing, you know, that's what it is. Invisible like all the reasons, talking cold like.